Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first, maybe, transfer talks of this season, where we, of course, talk about the confirmed transfers, the rumors, and whatever else in terms of the transfer market. And we're going to be speculating where the riders are going to be going in 2023. And as always, I've got Mr. Gregor himself, Mr. Ewan Wilson with me. And Ewan, the transfer market, of course, we talked about Bini Gumai. Looks like he's not going to be going to Ineos Grandiers, but where best to start with than Richard Carapaz. It looked like he was going to be winning the Giro d'Italia. And yeah, where is Richard Carapaz going for 2023? Well, this is the big story. We're still awaiting a little bit more, but Richard Carapaz's agent leaked during the Giro d'Italia that he has been linked with three teams, one of which is Ineos Grenadiers, the team he is currently at. The Ineos are currently, for some reason, they're not sure whether they want to re-sign him or not, or whether they can afford to re-sign Carapaz. Otherwise, Movistar have thrown their hat in the ring as a team that want to re-sign Carapaz. Remember when he won the Giro d'Italia? Well, that was with the Movistar team back in 2019. He trained with them and he was... I mean, he had his breakthrough with the team and Movistar are very interested in getting him back, particularly in the post Valverde era that we will see at the end of this year. The third destination is kind of, it was a mystery for a while, but it was announced to be EF Education Easy Post. Uh, yeah, this team has a number of Colombians on it. I think a lot of their staff are actually bilingual in English and Spanish, including Jonathan Vartas himself. And uh, I mean, this one also makes sense to join the Ecuadorian already there, Jonathan Caicedo. But I mean, three different cards on the table, three very different options for Richard Carapaz, the newly runner up of the Giro d'Italia. Yeah, we've said this so many times. He's one of the best, well, most consistent GC riders in a Grand Tour. He's podiumed all the Grand Tours with Ineos Grandiers, of course. But yeah, with Ineos. He faces competition from, we presume, when Egon Bernal is back, Adam Yates, Danny Martinez, but he still looks like he is the big guy, in a way, under Egon Bernal. With Movistar, they're losing Valverde, but then you've got Enrique Mas you have to compete with for the tour spot, if that's where he wants to go. But then you've got EF Education that presumably are going to be losing Rigoberto Ran at some point. So, yeah, Ewan, which one do you think is the best option for Mr. Ecuador? I think this is actually quite difficult. I think he's he's done surprisingly well at Ineos. If you told me back in 2020 when he signed, I would have said there's no way he'd podium a Grand Tour three seasons in a row, which he's done. He's been one of the most consistent apart from Pog and Rog. And he's been fantastic, to be fair, at Ineos. I think this fit works. Yes, I think he has to compromise a bit with Egon Bernal being there, but he's also had plenty of opportunities still at the team to, to have the chance to go for big races. And we've seen that. Movistar, I mean... Scott, since COVID, they have not been the same Movistar. I think ever since they lost Catapath, they haven't been the same Movistar. And I think it would be such a shame to see him go back, but they're probably going to have humongous paychecks. Also, I mean, the, the Latin American market is probably super important in terms of the finance as well. When you lose Valverde, exactly. they're going to have to sign a new star. That would be assumed to be Richard Catapath, Spanish speaking knows the setup. However, if you've seen El Dias Menos Pensado, the Netflix series, it didn't seem like he left on good terms at the end of season one. It didn't look like it was a happy move, but he also admitted at the time that a lot of it was money-based. Maybe he's doing the same thing and chasing the money again. Well, we should presume he's a multimillionaire at this point after writing Fania Screen Days. Um, true, true. But yeah, in terms of his cycling career potentially they're all leadership roles that he well he would be the he would definitely be the biggest rider in in movie star he would definitely be the biggest rider in ef education he might play second fiddle in ineos grandiers but be on more money potentially so do you go for the money or do you go for being able to be the lead rider at the tour de france if that's where he wants to be but i think Movistar are going to be the ones with the bigger paychecks here i think that's the problem Yes. Think? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think surprisingly, yes, because I think the reason that Ineos was struggling is because they weren't ready to commit financially to him. But how much money do you think Valverde is going to take with him to retirement? Maybe that's oh, that is punishment. huge. Come on, yeah. he's huge. And Basically I imagine he... their team. So it's like, yeah, exactly. Are the sponsors going to lose interest? Are movie star going to say we're going to basically take give you only half your budget next year? Well, then they throw in Calapaz, who's big in Latin America. True. That's Movistar true. operates in that corner of the world. It makes sense. They brought in Iban Sosa this year as well from Colombia. He knows the setup. I personally don't think it's going to be successful. In terms of EF, we actually haven't spoken about them either. I really don't know. They haven't had an, like an 
all-star grand tour rider for a while so i think that one's also quite risky well it's not just carapace we're talking about on this episode of transfer talks moving on to the news that well where could we go tom dumoulin retiring some sort of transfer you and does this surprise you of course he had his return back not stellar this season but um yeah it's a shame really it is i mean tom dumoulin is a rider that i've i really like i really appreciate tom dumoulin on many fronts and uh, it's, it, it's, it's a shame to see him go, but I understand. I think once he took his break and wasn't really coming back fighting as well, that's probably quite demoralizing. If you're, I mean, Chris Froome, take notes. If you're like a, a, a great, like if you've won a grand tour, you've been world champion, you've done all this stuff, you come back like post COVID and it's just not quite working, even though like you're in the brilliant team, like you've got a great setup and so forth. And it's just not quite working out. I mean, yeah, I get that. It's probably super frustrating. And I, I, I do think he lost his passion and fell out of love with the sport, which we've seen with Marcel Kittel as well. Like, if you're competing at the top level for a long time as well, it's taxing. Every decision you make in, in your day can, has to sort of somewhat reflect back to cycling. You want to spend more time with your kids. You can't do that because you're supposed to be racing in Canada next week. I understand that he has fallen out of love with this professional scene and i'm intrigued to see what he'll he'll do next who knows what it is he wanted to be a he wanted to go to med school maybe he'll go back to med school and i'm happy for him for that keeping on the dutch theme and also well we weren't in your screen this now we'll return again tyne arendsman of course the runner-up at the tour de l'avenir you and do you think potentially well not the last tour in l'avenir but the one tari bagaccio won but do you think this well he was omnipresent at this year's Giro d'Italia finished second in the last time trial is a very young talent and do you think this young dutchman is a good asset for well for his career as well it'll be good for his pay- paycheck or his bank account to go to Ineos Grandiers, but do you think it'll be a good move from him generally as well yeah this story comes courtesy of our source at Villa Flitz the Dutch uh, language publication and the journalist Raymond Kerkhoff's there saying that this is going to be a multi-year deal for Damon Anasman I can see this to be honest He's the classic Ineos fit, isn't he? He's a good climber who can time trial very well. Uh, he's young enough now where I feel like they could put him in that setup and maybe he'll work. At the same time, I'm worried that he'll fall in the same fate as Pavel Sivakov, who's, if they really invested all the time in Sivakov, would have been fantastic. It's a, a, a well destroyer, maybe. I don't know. I, I think Ironsman, this really fits. If not, I think Jumbo Visma could have been a good fit for him, but it makes sense. And also, I think, interestingly, once again, DSM losing another big talent. Why does it keep happening? I think they need to start looking within the, within themselves. But at the same time, about a week after this story broke from Vila Flitz, Roman Balde extended for two years uh, at DSM. So I don't know. I feel like this the setup doesn't work for everybody. And if Taman sees his career better elsewhere, then go for it. I think I think Ineos makes sense. So anyways, Ewan, we can talk about two riders leaving Ineos Grand Days and actually a prospect that we were, well, we could actually have Arendtman going into Eddie Dunbar, seen as the bright and super bright light for Ireland. And uh, many people touted him to even win the Tour de France when he was 18, well, like in his career. So Eddie Dunbar, of course, winner of the Tour of Hungary and recently, but also Delaman Bal, both of them rumored to be leaving Eddie Dunbar to bike exchange. And where is Delaman Bal going to? Well, Dylan van Barla, it's been pretty well documented if you haven't seen already it's linked to uh, Jumbo Visma this came about a week after he won Barrio Bay let's not forget that this rumor was surfacing quite strongly uh, it seems pretty accurate and from Bala to Jumbo Visma I think it'd be a really interesting fit the Jumbo Visma showed this season in the Cobble Classics they're very very strong we saw Nathan van Hoydon, Ketish Benoit, Christophe Laporte and Wild Van Aert be an absolutely fantastic team. With Dylan Van Barla there as well, I think it just it strengthens it a little bit more. Van Barla is, he can't bet on his sprint, but he's he's a great engine. When, when Van barla has gone, he's gone. I, I think he definitely brings something new to the table. And Jumbo Visma will be threatening next year in the cobbles. And uh, I mean, I could certainly see Van Barla repeating his Roubaix success with the Bumblebees. And in terms of Eddie Dunbar, I understand leaving Enios is a, is a good decision. Uh, he did not get as many opportunities as he wanted. He was visibly frustrated. If you listen to the interview he did in the Tour of Hungary, he mentions that he was frustrated that he wasn't picked for the Giro after being told and on the long list that he would be there. So getting snubbed like that, 
I think it is, it's, it's fuel to this case. And the rumor that we got from Gazzetta, Gazzetta rumors are usually very strong, particularly from Chiros con Emilio on the ground at the Giro d'Italia. This, I think, makes a lot of sense. Bike exchange, English language team, it, it makes sense. It's a mountain setup. I can't really complain. They're in need of a more reliable second tier mountain leader. Yeah, I think Eddie Dunbar could really flourish if he hits the ground running. But moving to a different team, Trek Segafredo, they are rumored to sign two young guns, Tess Fasion, of course, the Air Train, well, sub superstar, not Gemai, but of course, he did show his face at the Giro Italia, not quite how he wanted to at the blockout stage. And also, son of one uh, cyclocross legend Sven Ness Tibones of course who's been well kind of in the cycling conscious for many years already and uh, you and these two seem like amazing signings for Trek Segafredo to kind of freshen up their team a bit yes exactly that Tibones actually in fact has confirmed the signing he'll be on the team until 2025 beginning this summer actually he'll start from the 1st of August and I think it, it's super exciting I mean Tibones has so much hype around him in cyclocross and on the road he was junior European champion let's not forget for Belgium which is super impressive. There was there were even like exhibition events where he would race against Mattia van der Poel and Wild van Aert as well. I mean, Thibaut seems to be something quite special. We don't know what kind of rider he's going to be. I would assume quite similar to the kind of Remco, I hate to say the, the Remco style, but the super versatile, but also super strong uh, style. And in terms of uh, Tess Fazion, I think it's a brilliant signing. I mean, I feel bad for Gianni Savio and Drone Hopper losing another one of their big talents, but I guess that's kind of the team's purpose as well, is breeding these big talents, for instance, Egan Bernal. But Tessfazion to, to Trek makes a lot of sense. Trek already have Emmanuel Gebretzikabir. I apologize for the pronunciation, but another hour train on that setup will be really cool for the team. And it's nice to know that they're focusing on their young riders. They extended Maz Payson as well, and they've extended Balka Molima, interestingly. But the fact that they're emphasizing so much in these two young riders is really exciting. And I think in particular, Thibaut Nace is going to be a real steal on the market. Yeah, definitely. One of the future stars, you would say. Mm. And it should be interesting to see his development and also Tess Fassion. Well, moving on, keeping it on a Belgian theme, Tim Merlier, of course, took two stage wins last year in two separate Grand Tours. And Ewan, he's rumored to be going to Quickstep Alpha Vinyl. Do they even need a sprinter? That's another question. But yeah, what's the story? Well, this one was a bit of a surprise. So Tim Merlier has been linked. And I mean, from some of our sources... In the Flemish press, they're saying that it's an informal agreement already made between Lefebvre and Merlier's agent on a two-year deal for Tim Merlier at Quickstep, which will soon be called Soudal, um, rather frustratingly, as Soudal take title sponsorship of that team in 2023. So Tim Merlier will be heading over there, we assume. I mean, this also buys into the narrative of Mark Cavendish not having a contract for the end of the year. We don't know where he's going or if he will stay at Quick Step. But I mean, personally, I'm very surprised by this. Given that they have Jakobsen, who I think is one of the best sprinters in the world, I think similarly, Merlier on his day is a, is a world beater. He's fantastic. Having two of those guys, they bring them both to the Tour de France. Does does Merlier target the Giro d'Italia? It's it's I I think this is going to be a messy dynamic. And if Merlier wanted to sort of leave the shadow of Van der Poel and Philipsa, he hasn't really done that because he's now in the shadow of Jakobsen and potentially if Cavendish stays Cavendish. But I don't know. I, this one really does confuse me. Seems a bit modeling, but um. Anyway, we'll leave that to the future and see if that changes and gets confirmed, of course. Finishing on a former world beater, or current world beater, if you ask my girlfriend, Nairo Quintana, of course. And uh, you and where is the former podium finisher at the Tour de France rumored to be going to? Well, there was a really interesting article this morning published in L'Equipe here in the French media, all about the transfer market and the goals for each team. According to their keep, well, they say that Cofidis want to keep Guillaume Martin. As de says, Citroën are looking for a big sprinter to add to the Ben O'Connor-led GC team. And most importantly, Arkea are focusing more on prolonging Warren Barguil instead of Naira Quintana. According to this article, Quintana is no longer the priority at the team. I think that's a fascinating and be surprising given that they... 
They've relied on Quintana for so many World Tour points over the past couple of years. He's been their star. He's been their headline act. I mean, in terms of like the international scene, Arkea is put on the map by Quintana. In 2022 so far, he's been good. But I mean, the team, I think, has shone on their own. But I'm surprised by this. Let him go. They brought in, I mean, I'd say the Band of Merry Men to kind of help Quintana as well over the past couple of years. So maybe with that, then they leave as well. I don't know, Scott. What do you, what do you think about the fact that Arkea are no longer prioritizing Quintana, according to L'Equipe? Yeah, like it's exactly like you said, they're poster boy and to somehow it's not like he hasn't fallen off the map. He's he was up there in Paris Nice. Warren Bagui, he wins one stage in Triano Adriatico and you want to change your whole team's perspective. I think I think Bagui as well is also important because of the Breton aspect of it. He's a Breton rider riding for a Breton team. They also target the French circuit races, but they're gonna be World Tour next year. Let's not forget that. If if we exactly. assume the World Tour promotion relegation system is going ahead, Arkea are almost guaranteed World Tour licensed for next year. They need leaders and people who justify that license. Arkea didn't go to the Giro, for instance when they could have. They had the invite, but they turned it down. Next year, they're going to have to go to all of these races. Who's going to lead the team? Who's going to be the, the, their chosen son at events like that? Without Quintana, that just rules one card out, but maybe Quintana's asking for too much money. Maybe they want to get him off the books and try to target other riders. I mean, there are plenty of people up, up here for, for signing this year. I mean, Quintana, it seems obvious. He's on the team already. It's a, it's the simpler move. I think you might be onto something with him potentially asking for too much money. Well, if you saw El Dias Menas Piensado, I mean, he didn't come across particularly well in it. It seemed like cycling was more of a job to him than just El Pacion or whatever you want to say. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, he is huge. I feel like because he was the most successful, he was in that first big wave of Colombian riders in the 21st century. I think he is a bit of a figurehead for that, but... Does Quintana have that many more years in the legs? Let's not forget, it's going to be 10 years next year since he broke through at the 2013 Tour de France. I don't really care what he does if he retires. After he he declined two Colombian fans and not wanting to even take pictures with them, I am I lost everything for him. So, yeah. <laughs> Leaving yeah. on that high note, <laughs> that's it for this first transfer talks that is debatable uh, of this year, 2023. And of course, we have got a website where we have all the up-to-date rumors and transfers that we are talking about. So do check that out in the link down below. And of course, uh, if you haven't already, make sure to check out the Cycling Day and Extra channel, subscribe to the channel, comment down below what you think of these transfers, of course. So let's get the dialogue open and if you've seen any that we missed as well hit them down in the comments so that's basically it for this the first show or the first transfer talk so um yeah we'll see you on the next one